This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about the Browning version from 1951, directed by Anthony Asquith. Ooh. Remember that guy? That guy? Am I? Should I remember that guy? Sure. He's directed two previous Criterion films, RJ. <laughs> Can you recall them? I thought this was the first one. I got, I'm not going to lie to you. What were the other ones? Pygmalion. Oh. And The Importance of Being Earnest. Well, well, well. I, I didn't realize the Pygmalion thing, but that makes sense now, actually. Yeah. Can we can we get this out of the way right now? Um, is this the worst title of a movie we've ever had? Well, it's a title. I, I bo- it is a title. But... What, would be a, what would be a better title? This is about school. <laughs> I, I mean, well, what does the Browning version mean? It, there's, a, there's a throwaway line. It's, it's very literary. I, I know, but like... So my mind. It's about the past. It's about like aspirations. It's about. It is an important thing. Yeah, it's talking about like the goal of. I mean, we'll we'll get there. But it's about. It's about the croc. It's what the croc was interested in doing at one point, and it's about. I don't know. I would have called it like overripe. It would have sounded like a Rodney Dangerfield movie. (laughs) Exclamation mark! Just when I see Browning version, it makes me think of diarrhea. Interesting. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know if audiences were there with you in 1951 on that one. Well, I'm. I was ahead of my time. I'm ahead of my time now. I'm. I was ahead of their time then too. It's like the was it that one episode of the X Files, the Erlenmeyer flask? Uh, what happens? I don't know the titles. What happens in that one? I don't know. There's like aliens, <laughs> probably. Oh, I think I think uh... I think it's a season one episode. Yeah, I'll look it up. You yeah. tell me about uh, the okay. brown. The tagline for this film, RJ. Sure. How could he look on and say nothing? It was his wife. <laughs> I um, I don't think that's the main takeaway from this this film. No? I feel like that's a side note, mm-hmm. to be honest. So, I mean, that's fine that that's what they want to go with. But <clears throat> Andrew Crocker Harris has been forced from his position as the classics master at an English Mm -hmm. public school due to poor health. As he winds up his final term, he discovers not only that his wife, Millie, has been unfaithful to him with one of his fellow schoolmasters, but that the school's students and faculty have long disdained him. However, an unexpected act of kindness causes Crocker Harris to reevaluate his life's work. That's definitely what happens. It's similar to that uh, the season finale of episode or of uh, the finale of season one of X Files, the Erwin Meyer Flask, where okay. Deep Throat tips Mulder to critically important cases involving missing fugitive and cloning extraterrestrial viruses. <clears throat> yeah, but that's definitely the plot to that film. RJ, how how is your um, your Latin? Uh, it's not as good as it was, but I can yeah. say uh, Fiat Lux. Do you know that one, Jared? <laughs> I'm aware of that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll let uh, I'll let listeners out there uh, figure that one out. I but, know. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the one I got. How yeah. about you? Uh, my my Latin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deus ex machina. It, just exquisite pronunciation. <laughs> Right, right on, man. You, you did it. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Top notch, top notch. Anyway, so uh-huh. I, I, so one, number one, I've never seen this movie before. Number okay. two, uh, as Archie kind of alluded to, nothing about this title would make you run out and watch this movie. No, yeah, it's, it's it just like, doesn't it's sound. Like there's there is something about the word brown and what <laughs> your mind just comes to. And you go, I don't want anything to do with Brown. Uh, There's actually a Mm -hmm. book or an article about this very topic about Brown and how Brown is very neglected in painting and in like uh, even like artistic essays, like art essays and discussion about the use of Brown in color, even though like Brown is used all the time. Brown's a building Mm -hmm. block. Brown's great. Brown goes with everything. Brown's great. Mm -hmm. Lovely color. However, something about like, hey, you want to spend time with this thing? It's brown. How often do you hang with your brown? Um, well, I was going to say that as a younger man, I would read 
Vertigo comics that DC mm-hmm. published back when. And it always had the reputation of being brown. It always had a very brown color palette, very mm-hmm. earthy and real. And sometimes I think for some people, it's like, that's just go away heat. That's just makes me hear something called brown. You go, Ugh. no, mm-hmm. I want, I want colors, man. I have a brown shirt. Yeah. And uh, I don't mind it. Yeah. I don't mind it. Is it brown or beige? It's brown. Yeah. Khaki? Uh, it's like a Carhartt like shirt kind of it's like it's like it's just a brown shirt i see yeah no i i know what you mean though people do shy away from the brown people got to learn how to handle the brown in my opinion like the browning version sure potentially so this movie opens up it's um an english public school which of course mm-hmm. means the opposite of what that word means because it's english because a public school is actually, in fact, what we would call a private school. But they're yes. te- these people are tedious, RJ. They, I think they make more problems for themselves than they need to. Yeah. They, they care about a great number of things uh, besides how unerotic they are. They, sure. Uh, they, they're very concerned about pronunciation. Potentially. Like, that hey, is that word well. says reading. It's like it's reading. <laughs> Reddings. <laughs> <laughs> something Duh. across the Thames and blah 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 anyway not, yes. none of that's an issue with this movie mm-hmm. this movie has a timeless quality I feel RJ and I didn't realize watching this mm-hmm. that it was some real sad bastard stuff uh yes it is quite a bit quite a bit I'll, I'll let you keep going okay but, uh, it's for sure sad bastardy so I don't have like super deep notes on this so I'm gonna kind of okay spitball my way through this so it opens up with uh a gathering of students at morning prayer it's like school assembly in the church because it is a public school and um so you have the headmaster who's an english man who talks like this and you always know that these guys (laughs) are full of shit this guy's like that that gaseous accent of his Mm. it's it's a little hot well a little up here it's a little high, you know. A little falutin? A little high. Falutin. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're introduced to a new schoolmaster who's coming in to replace the old, Andrew mm-hmm. Crocker Harris, a.k.a. The Croc. They, yeah, he's the Croc. He's also known, known as the uh, the Himmler of the uh, Lower Fifth. Yes, the Lower all, Fifth. All See, sorts of names. And, and these are divisions that, uh, you know, not being part of this school system like what's the lower fifth what's the upper fifth i don't understand the designation but you don't need to know it you just kind of go it's like when you graduate (laughs) i guess from like Uh, level a to level b i i took it kind of like almost literally where it's just like as you move through grade through grade you just your classes are in different sections of the building so it's like lower fifth upper fifth and it's like grade five, grade six. Like, right. That's kind that, of, yeah. That's what I meant. Like it's yeah. Um, I think there, that's what it, even though it's like weird, complicated way of saying yes. the grades. Yes. Yeah. Education. It's not fixed in stone. It's always changing. It's very malleable. Unless Tabula you are Rasa. Andrew Crocker Harris, who is a mm-hmm. slight, quiet man, who does mm-hmm. not like his job anymore or much of anything really whatsoever but he is a man defined by his job so that we had michael redgrave who plays andrew crocker harris uh the teacher who's like the subject of the story uh this also fits into the uh saddled man genre uh yes. subgenre of the criterion collection kind of the your akiru's mm-hmm. your uh what are the other ones here Oh, of great. sad old men, yeah. Uh, Umberto D. Umberto, old, Umberto old D. Movies. Yeah, Umberto D. No, Akiru. No. Um, Tokyo uh, stories like know. old sad old people. Yes, sad old peoples. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, wild here. strawberries. Wild strawberries for sure. Uh, I didn't have my list up before. Um, Winter Light, I guess you could include in in that category. I mean, that's just, as well. that's, he's just a miserable priest, though. He, yeah, but he's he, also he looks old, of age. Yeah, in a sense. I mean, that's just uh, what, they, they all look like that at that age. The leopard is a sad old man. 
Um, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Fit I mean, that. he's rich, but he's mm-hmm. still sad. Sad old patriarchs. Yeah. Killing of a Chinese bookie. He's kind of sad. <laughs> but he's but he's having fun at his strip club. He's having fun, but on the inside, there's sadness. Sadness. So, I'm not an I'm not an educator myself, but sure. um, I think everyone has gone to school at some point, even mm-hmm. if they've. Uh, you know, stuck around to work in there or just as a kid. And you kind of remember there's the teachers that you liked and there's the teachers you're like, oh, fuck, this guy. (laughs) You're like, this piece of shit again? hate this guy. So there's the cool teacher. Yep. Um, And he he makes them laugh. He makes them laugh. He dazzles them. But are they they really learning what they're supposed to, Jared? I don't know. One questions. One, One questions. questions. It. Uh, that that chap is played by Nigel Patrick. Matthew Modine. Ma- or Matthew Modine in 1994. And Ralph. Uh-huh. Ralph. Albert Finney. Albert Finney. Albert as, Finney. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we'll get, we'll get there. We'll get there. Sorry. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a look at there. So anyway, um, this is the last like couple days of Crocker Harris's time at the school. He has some mm-hmm. kind of like ill-defined illness that he has to take he has to step away from whatever he's doing and do a lot less Mm -hmm. and in doing so he had to retire prematurely take a teaching position somewhere else he's taking a big pay cut and no pension despite the fact that he was like just that close but the school is kind of like well (laughs) we don't have to pay you so we're not going to you understand don't you old boy that kind of like Knife between the ribs, and that comes. That reveal comes later in the movie as well. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of a it's a character study in a lot of ways. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Yeah, so I don't have a different way to put it. But that's okay, one way to put it beautiful, beautiful. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we get to see only him teach once specifically in the if, in the film uh right at the beginning and it, it's it does a pretty good job of giving you a snapshot of like this is what his class is always like his he he browbeats the students even when he's like congratulating them he also just defines it like how it's barely competent and it's still horrible but you're the best of the lot and the rest of you holy you're doing it all over again this is an embarrassment there's just no attempt to engage the students there's no attempt to like I don't know. Get get benefit them in any way? <laughs> uh well he he does things this particular way, right? He's every, like this every, is what's always worked. I'm going to do well, it. Yeah, all, or, always worked according to me because this is this was good enough for me him. and it's good enough for everybody else and things aren't going to change cuz I am a classicist. I am a, yes. I am a teach the masters. You you know about that Agamemnon? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to teach that. <sighs> Uh, yeah, I, I found that funny, but it's kind of like what you said actually too, where it's, uh, I, I, I thought the same thing where it's one kind of universal equalizer is that everyone has, well, not quite everyone, but most people have attended school in some fashion, right? Yeah. And they all have that example of here's the cool fun guy. And then here is the guy that everyone hates. Sometimes the guy is just an absolute prick, but mm-hmm. sometimes it's just like an old out of touch dude like this. He's like, you know, the Agamemnon, it is the greatest play of all time. <laughs> and these kids are like, we're eight years old. <laughs> we don't care. Oh, I see you're inserting dramaturgy into the story. That is, uh, it would be appropriate if you were a regular so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like whoever is like British, like, you know, a playwright that comes like 80 years later in 450 BC or whatever the fuck. Like, you're just like, oh, of course, we all know him. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, exactly. And then it's it's one of those people where it's like, like, I don't think I don't think you're intentionally trying to be a bad guy. You just seem like a bad guy. Yeah. Like, Some, something went wrong. Like In some ways, um, this sort of character uh you see in something like breaking bad without like the make, uh, yeah. make, making meth but it's like someone that had a lot of promise and mm-hmm. this life decisions occur maybe if mm-hmm. some some character flaws develop or you know take seed and they just grow and grow and mm-hmm. lack of ambition uh frustration disappointment and turns into a i don't know a sad bastard if i uh... 
if that's the definition you want to use, because I'm always yeah. unsure when to use it correctly. Yeah. So uh, this this has the, this has got strong sad bastard vibes. Yeah, I thought so as well. Um, and then we got Tapolo. <laughs> Oh, old Taplo. He, you know why I I feel for Taplo. He's, he he's he's that one kid who's just when everyone's shitting on someone, he's like, I don't know, guys. He's mm-hmm. like, there's always that maybe, character. Maybe we should just kind of you know not be a shitty kid. Right, and the, this is like a pretty, I don't know, universal kind of character, yeah, like trope as far as like, hey, I've heard that this piece of shit's a real bad dude. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll be the one that like can see it through and can reach him. And then like very quickly, you know, there's like, even the scene where that kid gets dressed down because he's trying to be polite by laughing at one of um, uh, Crocker Harris's jokes. That's like, if, if all I have to say about that is uh, this little quip in in Latin. And then the kid just said, Haha. And he's like, oh. You found that was amusing. What did could you repeat to the class what that meant to you? <laughs> it's like, oh no, I was just trying to. I was just laughing out of politeness. Ah, I see. Well, he goes, oh. Well, I think he, you? but he knew, but he was also like using his, yeah. like, a big power move, and then of mm-hmm. course the other kids like they feel bad for him now. He's a, he's an asshole. <laughs> I told you he was a piece of shit. Look at him. No, yeah. laughing at you. Yeah. Yeah. So of course Taplo is also being paid by Taplo's probably marvelously wealthy family to get per- teaching lessons, personal lessons from the teacher, you know, to guarantee his spot properly in the uh mm-hmm. in the upper uh, fifth in, in the hierarchy of the school. And uh, mm-hmm. he's like he takes that very seriously, he makes him have his lessons, he even makes it square up. There's no like, ah, you missed this week, don't worry about it. It's like, no, I was paid by your father to make sure you get additional information. What sort of person would I be if I did not keep my word? So a kid shows up inconveniently while uh, Crocker Harris's wife wants to bang um, her lover, fellow schoolmaster, the the popular teacher, who's the Mr. Science guy. Mm -hmm. The chem teacher who gets to do all the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, So that has the exchange. You get to... Uh, Taplo doing an impression of Crocker Harris. His, uh, Crocker Harris's wife catches it, and she's a little, oh dear, very embarrassed. I thought, I thought his impression was decent. He did a good, good little job. Mimicry, I believe, uh, is what it's called. Mm-hmm. It's a sincere form of uh, flattery, mm-hmm. no? Tr- yeah. <laughs> Imitation. I'm not sure about In- Mimicry. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Oh. But uh, anyways, Crocker Harris's day just kind of keeps getting worse and worse in a lot of ways because he gets the bad news. Uh, mm-hmm. He's also told that, oh, yeah, the other teacher who's younger, the, your junior, he's also retiring because he's going to go play sports in Australia or cricket. Yeah, New Zealand. He's going to be a cricketer and he's mm-hmm. a big star and everybody likes him. And uh, it's a jolly good job, you know. And uh, he's like, well, can you go before him? Because you're going to bring down the room and we want to bring it back up. And it's like, it's, oh, yeah. well, yeah, whatever, I guess. Because he's all beaten down. Well, he says, uh, he says, you're a little anticlimactic. We we got to end on a climax, all yeah. right? He said, everyone loves this, uh, this cricket player. He's a big star. Sports are king. And uh, they go, you're kind of an old man and you bump people out. Also... You don't get a pension, so no. you want to just go away, kind of. Yeah. Just leave, if you can. If, if you can. If you can. So, yeah, they lay like, again. They they kind of lay out the the ongoing relationship between his wife and her lover very lightly. Mm-hmm. Um, like you know what's going on. They don't make a big deal about it. And mm-hmm. you're just like, yeah, these kind of, kind of are in a relationship together, but mm. barely. And it seems like it's very hostile. And there's some yep. interesting rules that, like, she never lies to him until the very mm-hmm. end, until it's actually over, uh, which is a, a nice little touch. When it's like she, when she, when she's telling uh, uh, Crocker Harris, like, he's, he's going to come to see me. He's going to come to see me. He's like, I'm sure he will. Because <laughs> he you knows, like, yeah. he, he can tell. He can actually know immediately. He's like, oh, no, she's lying to me. And it's the, yeah. end, of, it's the end of the road. When, mm-hmm. um, when, when It's all about, you know, uh, how Andrew Crocker Harris got his groove back 
Oh, I think that's a better alternative title. Yeah. Is that what's in the, uh, like the, um, what's this guy's name again? The, the director? Yeah. Anthony Asquith. Is that in the Asquith cut? Like, you know yeah. how they released the Asquith cut? Released the Asquith uh, title. Yeah, of the Browning version. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, what else about the plot? So anyway, like, yeah, there's a big, there's, I a, can big, tell you. there's a big crock in the game and yep. he goes to that, the, the headmaster scumbag comes and mm-hmm. tells him all this bad news, asks for favors. You can yeah. tell he's just like everything you want from like kind of a despicable kind of authority figure. Upper management. Yep. He's like, he's, he's, he's all smiles and sunshine to your face but you know he's plotting to do whatever he wants to do anyway and we'll take definitely take advantage of you because it's like you're so easy going mm-hmm. um but this <clears throat> kind of builds to a head and um there's discussion about translations um <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah about agamemnon <laughs> and so this this little taplo shit you know he decides he's going to get uh, a gift, a going away present to the uh, to the exiting teacher that nobody likes. He gets him a copy of the Browning version translation Ooh. of Agamemnon, and gives it to him. And it has an inscription in it mm-hmm. that uh, that greatly shakes um, Crocker Harris. This is on the tail end, though, of him going to pick up his remaining personal belongings in his classroom and i th- and he has a conversation with his replacement who says oh well yeah the headmaster made a joke that uh, you're the himmler of the lower fifth <laughs> and this like he's like oh i swear <laughs> himmler huh <laughs> he starts thinking about the himmler oh you mean the architect of the holocaust <laughs> like that himmler the himmler yeah. the head of this the secret service <laughs> and and the guy's like oh maybe i shouldn't have told well, he, you yeah it's like they saw like how horrified yeah. and mortified he is because this is such a yeah. polite society being like oh, well you know he, he wasn't thinking and he's like oh yeah. maybe he'll like have a sense of humor about it but he's like no he's never heard it Mm-hmm. And uh, he's going through the ramifications of it, and it's crushing to him. And then, so yeah, then he gets this moment where he goes back, finds the book, where it's like, maybe I'm not so bad. And then, of course, his wife can't even let him have that and tells him, well, you know, he was making fun of you just like a day ago, and he felt bad about that. And that's why he got you the book, asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, you feel for him there, because he, he totally turns where he's just like, you, you feel his embarrassment, and he's just like, he's like, man... I didn't care. I never cared. You know. Fuck that kid. Nobody cares. Leave me alone. And you're mm-hmm. just like, man, that's where you start to feel for him. You know, yeah. you're just like, oh man, yeah. it sucks to be this guy. His wife's yeah. really shitty. So, um, the bull Frank, he goes to tell uh, Andrew Crocker Harris, no, no, your wife was got it all wrong. The kid mm-hmm. didn't mean it like that. And he's like, oh yes, well, it's like I know. He basically, says, yeah, I know you've been banging my wife. And you're like, and he's like, what? It's like, well, why aren't you like, why would you let this continue happening? And he's like, holy shit, this guy really is like uh, lost a lot of spunk <laughs> in, his, in mm-hmm. his like approach to the world, and just like how oh, again, sad bastard this all is. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know. So the, I guess the tri- triumph starts to be that Andrew Crocker Harris starts to like regain a little bit of like gumption. Um, uh, yes, a little bit. He's, he's like, he's like, hey, I want to go on last. I, I don't want to be booked last. I don't care if it'll make for a better feel good moment. Uh, well, I, I like his point. He was like, he's like, yeah, people will applause, but you know, sometimes the anticlimax is better. He's like, sometimes it's better to just go on a somber note because it really sticks. Oh, uh, setting things up. Yeah. So, yeah, he gives his... He, he, so, yeah, the, the popular guy gives his speech. It goes as well as you can. And then um, Crocker Harris goes up. To, oh, was that, RJ? Yeah. I was going to say, there is the dinner before. Because the, oh, the speech sorry. is at the end. Yeah. So we, ha- we have the dinner where uh, the biggest thing I think that happens is uh, when other... When the fireworks. Professor, yeah. yeah, so when chemistry professor sees how shitty the wife is, he's just like... He's like, you know, I was going to leave you anyways. He's like, but now I'm really going to leave you because you're you suck. And then they go to the dinner Mm -hmm. and all the boys leave. And then a chem professor and Crocker Harris are together. And and dude's like, you know what, man? He's like, you should leave that 
you should leave that chick. She is not good for you or for me. We should just break it off. Maybe we can be best friends. Maybe we can be besties. Like where she walks in on this as they're shaking hands, she's like, "What the fuck?" She's like, "What the fuck is this?" And uh, I love, I, I really love how Crocker Harris downplays it because he doesn't care the whole time. He's like, "Whatever." He's like, "People are just gonna misuse me again." He's like, "I don't know if this guy's genuine or not." Uh, but then the wife is like, "You know, he doesn't. He didn't mean any of that. He's really coming for me." And he, the Crocker Harris is like, "I'm sure he is." Uh, I'm sure that all, everything you want is going to work out. And then he's like, just so you know, you can go. I'm going to stay. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm pretty much done with you. Uh, she, and not not as in that many words, but uh, he, he does get kind of like that kind of touch to her where he's like, go, stay. I don't give a shit anymore. Do whatever the fuck you feel like. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, and then the next day is when we get the um, – the uh the speeches and uh yeah cricket boy goes up first and he's just like yeah we're gonna sport out there because sport real good <laughs> and uh might even sport a little bit more and Woo! The kids are like, yeah, yeah! Like, yeah this guy's amazing and then crocker harris comes up and crocker harris comes up and he's yeah. for and he starts off crocker harrising he's like i'm not i'm not going to break character this mm-hmm. is this is I'm going to do I'm going to stick to my convictions of how I've always dealt with these things, but mm-hmm. then he has that then he stammers, and everyone's like lost interest and they're like oh god this guy again one last time we have to listen to him and then he breaks kayfabe, the 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 the, mm-hmm. the, the, the curtain pulls back and he he says I'm sorry and he speechifies and he gives a a moving mm-hmm. final speech apologizing how he failed every all the students he should have done better he should have aimed for the more and he gave a mm-hmm. heartfelt apology. And uh, and he leaves it at that, and he gets a, a roaring ovation. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And the kids say, wait a minute. He really means it. Yeah. He really means it. And then the headmaster ch- tries to interrupt. He goes, all right, guys, let's get back to Chris. But, but, but the ovation, ovation's too loud. <laughs> he tries about four times. He says, well, uh, well, uh, well. And then we go outside. No. Crocker Harris is walking around, and uh, we got uh, young Taplo, and he comes up again, and Taplo is just like, hey, you know, we maybe had some differences, but uh, last couple of days, I think you're not a too bad of a guy. I hope you're doing well. Mm-hmm. I'll see you later. And, and, and what else, though? Because also the whole, there's, he, a, there's an ongoing plot thread of uh, Taplo really, really wants to know if he's going to pass, I guess. Yeah. And the entire time, it's like at the end of the term or whatever, like the end of the process, and there's literally no reason a teacher wouldn't be able to say this like say if they're because like, it doesn't matter. It's like foregone conclusion. But the entire time like, no, it's strict. Must stick to the regiments of it all. Yeah. But then if he lets slip, wink. That's, well, he... He he, yeah, he says he says he words in such a way. Um, I hope you have a better attitude when you're in the upper half or upper fifth or whatever it is. Said, do do me a favor, he said. If you actually respect me, do me a favor, don't blow up next year. And Tapwell goes, "Really, sir?" He said, "I'm awfully regretful." <laughs> oh, eh. And then he runs away. <laughs> oh, eh. oh, eh. that's, that's pretty little, much what he does. Some, 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 sure. Why me? Crike. Mm-hmm. All of a grunge. And then it ends on a da, 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 da. happy music. Hey, he looks up to the clock one more time. He mm-hmm. goes, mm-hmm. Yeah, did it. Nailed it. And all is well. Yep. Um, yeah, so this is a really good movie, RJ. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I can talk if you want. Or... Yeah, I mean, I mean, I can. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, I, I, I had no expectations of this. Maybe they were lowered expectations. I was kind of like, oh, boy. Here we mm-hmm. go. This this sounds like this poster looks like the boringest thing in the world. It literally has the word mm-hmm. brown in the title. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't really read the description of what it was, but I hear classics master at an English public school and I go, Oh, 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 oh. I wanna die. I wanna get hit by a bus before I had to watch this. So I don't ever have to watch uh-huh. this. So I I got there. So I, I, I get there and I watch this. And it's like, oh, this is a really good movie. So, so uh, wow. I had the I had the exact same response where uh, the first five minutes, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, what is this about public schools? This old bastard. I don't fucking care. Uh, and then about seven minutes into the movie, the dialogue starts ripping. And then I was like, hold on. I was like, that was pretty good. I like what they're saying here. 
and then the dialogue gets better and better and then you start feeling for this old guy and uh, i agree i think this movie is actually like i think this thing's really good yeah I, I was really i got sucked into this thing big time but first five minutes just based on title alone i was like what the? i was like who fucking cares yeah i mean there was like an this movie's pretty quickly paced and like the editing's pretty spot on the acting is like really good um, yes. Like, yeah, yep. the, the, especially again, when we watch some contemporary versions of this, yes. it just has like a total, like, I don't know. I, I was thinking of like words to describe how perfectly good this is as a British movie. It's got like these elements I love about British cinema. Uh, it's got this uh, acerbicness to it. Like it's very, mm. it's got a meanness and callousness to it, but it's also extremely, uh, got like that heartfeltness that you could expect like, from like something like Paddington, <laughs> where you're kind of like, oh, yeah. yeah. And, I, and it has those, it point. has that it has that like that combination of like it's very like vicious and mean, but it also has like very like wearing its heart on its sleeve too. But it's like yeah. but, but trying to do it in this way where it's like not maudlin and uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's that's a good way to put it actually. Um. It is kind of like it fits perfectly for like what you said. It's a, it's a nice just day in England. Cucumber sandwiches, Earl Grey tea, biscuits, <laughs> scones, all sorts of stuff. Pip pip, uh, pip pip, hooray! And that's all that's all present in this. Um, but it does really. There was no double does... decker bus though, no Big Ben, so I'm, I was confused. Not quite, not quite. Uh, but there's some big hats, so we got that going for us. Uh, no, I thought the same. I, I thought the same thing. Where it, it does really fit into that, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't look into it. But um, when after you said that this was a pig pygmalion guy, I was like, oh, of course, it, it all makes sense now. Um, I think the dialogue in this thing is just fucking cracking. It's crackin'. just right there, cracking, baby. It's right. There. That's so, a new word I'm trying out. Yeah. Um, you're, it's, gonna, you're gonna get it over. Yeah, I mean. I, it's already done. It, uh, the so this, dialogue is so this is based on a short. play by Terence Rattigan. Uh, you ever, I, you ever, you ever, you ever heard of the Winslow Boy? Nope. No. There, it's a pretty good show, nope. RJ. No. <laughs> I think uh, David Mamet might have written a uh, or done a film adaptation of this at one point. I could be wrong. Maybe that's the Winslow Boys. Nope, he did do uh, it. I was right. Uh -huh. I do know David Mamet. You know that Mamet, damn it. Yeah, I know Mamet. Maybe that's a, a staple of Terrence Rattigan. It could be. It could be. But uh, what was I going to say? Um, do you have anything more to say? I I have a bit to say. Oh, I'm, I know. Like I, I, no, I, I, no, it's good. Uh, you, you, you can take it away. I'm... Yeah. So uh, same as you. I was kind of like, um, at first I was like, eh, whatever. But uh, the dialogue really sucked me in. And then the sad bastard, the sad bastard isness, whatever the that phrase would be. Sad bastardry. The sad bastardry of uh, this guy uh, really pulls you in, um, and it's kind of like what you were talking about with Babylon Five earlier, where uh, they set up a guy to be like, you're like, it's immediately relatable. It's universal. You're just like everyone had a teacher that was kind of an asshole, and you're just like, yeah, I know this guy, uh, and so you automatically you're like. This guy sucks. I hate him. Uh, but then good character development. You start to see why this guy is the way he a, is. A little and... bit, though, too, because they don't like over. Yeah. They, don't, they don't do nope. any flashbacks. It's, very subtle. it's super subtle character work. It's... It takes its time. Yeah. Yeah. It, good character work. It's subtle. It takes its time and it builds and it breathes. And you, you get a I think you get a scene for every little thing. Like you see him with his class. You see him with his colleagues. You see him with just an individual student and you're kind of like, you're like, yeah, this guy's kind of a dink. But then you start, they start to peel back that a little bit and you're just like, well, this is what those people are like outside of it. This is what the kids are like. This is what the colleagues are like. This is what the boss is like. And I think it does a really good job at like, uh, like contrasted to the remake, which I think shits all over this thing, <laughs> uh, which we'll get there. But um, Brown style. Yeah. Brown style. Uh, it's just, it, it, it takes its time and it's just like, yeah, this is what this guy is like. And um, I think it really kind of showcases each of those 
each of the people involved in this. And uh, that's what you need. Like it, it kind of, it brings the full picture to it. it doesn't focus on anything more than it needs to like uh, the affair stuff. Like it shows it happening and then it kind of, it kind of moves on for a while because it's just like, that's all you need to know right now. Yeah. These two people are having an affair. That's it. Uh, and then like, here's the headmaster with a guy. He's definitely misusing him and like, uh, gets him to do way more shit than he's supposed to. That's it. And it's like, that's one of the reasons he's like tired and doesn't have time for himself anymore. Uh, so like, I, I think the best part is that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't show anything more than it needs to, but it also allows everything the time that it that it deserves. It's like, no, we it's like this little moment between the teacher and the student. We're going to actually kind of let this go out a little bit here. We're going to show why this is an important part of what's going on, uh, which I think is really well done. Um, so I, I, I really I think you you do develop a really good sense for this guy as the movie builds. Um, and I think by the time when we're, they're talking about him being sick you see that the headmaster shitting on him, you see that everyone shits on him basically. And then like the moment that the, uh, Taplo actually does him like something nice. I think, yeah, that, the, I think the, it really the, shines. Yeah. The, the inscription is, uh, yeah. God from afar looks graciously upon a gentle master. Yeah. And I think like, and, uh, you can tell in his, uh, like his response to, he's just like, uh, he's like, I didn't think anyone really cared. And, uh, I think a show, like it really shines. I think that that scene is great. Um, because you're like, man, what a nice little thing that, uh, these two people share between each other. Well, um, and, and like uncontrollable sobbing, uh, yeah. is very, uh, not powerful British. <laughs> like, no. cause it's all about like, I don't know. Prim and proper. Pr- pr- yeah. It's about presentation and, or conversing in particular, at least in film. Like, I don't know. I think in reality, it's a different story, but like in their, in plays and stuff like that, it seems to be like, no, it's verboten to, uh, well, plus it's the whole character's point too, right? Like his whole character is like, I am exactly what I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Nothing else, nothing more, which is like his quote, right? Like he's never going to have a grand display or anything like that. So, I think that scene is really good. Uh, I did also really like the scene with the two guys, like just kind of chatting where the the chem teacher is just like, man, your wife sucks. He's like, how do you stay married to her for so long? He's like, because I am. He's like, that's what marriage is, buddy. Uh, And he's like, maybe one day you'll figure it out. Um, uh, I really like that. Uh, I do think that the ending scene is pretty effective. Uh, I liked, I liked that quite a bit too. And then there was a moment here where I was kind of like, between the uh, when it's Crocker Harris and his wife and he's kind of trying to rationalize it where the chem teacher's like, why do you stay with her? He's like, because we're married. He's like, I did her bad once. She's doing me bad now. He's like, it's well, just this wait, thing. And what was the thing that he did bad by her? Was he it, married her. He married her. Yeah. He mar- and like you and like that makes you feel even worse because this guy's just like he's like she should have had someone else and I married her so I I feel like I owe her one and you're just like geez dude mm-hmm. it's not your fault <laughs> but uh, I it kind of uh, it honestly at that moment this kind of reminded me of Phantom F- Thread a little bit not not in the same way because like it's a very different kind of end there where it's like feeding off of each other for positive things i thought this is like oh they're feeding off each other but in a negative way Mm -hmm. (laughs) where it's just like one guy is getting shit on and just getting pushed down but i was like it it just kind of reminded me of that movie a little bit and i was like not that it's super similar in any in any any rate but uh yeah this i thought this movie was great i was super surprised by this uh I told Andy, I was like, man, I got totally sucked in. I was like, that doesn't happen very often mm-hmm. in these movies yeah. anymore. Not, 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 not much for me at least. I was just like, this is a, this is a rarity for me. I liked this. I liked it so much that I looked at, I, I looked at the supplements, and uh, all the only supplement on the channel was an interview with, with Mike, the director, Mike Vegas, of the re- remake. And I went, hold on remake Mm -hmm. and then that that put us down a more troubling uh route but uh, i'll let you uh if you have anything else you want to say about this before we get to uh that uh that toilet (sighs) 
Is it that bad? So, yeah. It's, I, it's I, not. It's I, just I've in got, comparison. Well, watching them back to backs, I think, yeah. a really bad idea. Because it's yes. just, they're so. Anyway, yeah, I've got not too much to add. Like, yeah, I know this movie's uh, really good. Yes. And uh, I think uh, definitely one of the more. Pl- it's been a while since I've had like a. Oh, like a pleasant surprise i guess for uh, a criterion movie of late where you're like oh i've never seen this never heard anything about it and it's like oh damn this is actually a really good movie yeah it is it's uh it was a total nice. surprise and i really liked it you know uh so 1994 rolls around mm-hmm. and the world i think there, yeah. and i think there's like a production like a, in 1985 as well but this like one a broadway production no like a film production Oh, okay. maybe it, maybe it's a TV movie. I'm not going to investigate it too closely, but we got Big Guns. Albert Which Finney, ones? Alfred the Gun Finney, Matthew uh-huh. the Gun Modine, Julian Sands, Warlock himself, Warlock, Michael Polish. Gambon, G- uh, Dumbledore, Dumbledore as, as a headmaster, <laughs> playing just Dumbledore, just, kind of just Dumbledore. Mm-hmm. So anyway, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's the exact same movie. Um, yep, pretty much. However, how, however, you you really start to be like, oh, uh, Michael Redgrave does so much, and yes. like the, his delivery, playing that particular character, is why he's so memorable. And Albert Finney is just like, well, I could be any old bitter old man. <laughs> it doesn't really it changes it completely, and you're just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of so. Yeah, it's not the, uh, it's not, it's not like that bad. It's not like the producers remake, which is just shit. Um, it's not that bad, but yeah, watching back to back, you really like it. It made me like the original one even more. Where I was like, fuck, that was good. I was like, how much they actually put into building these characters and the scenes in the remake. The biggest thing is like they really um. They take away from the things that made the one the first one good, and then they build up stuff where it's like, I could it's like a total '90s thing in a sense where they're like, you know what we needed more of? We needed to show the affair more, man, and we need to show kids being kids more, man, like kids hanging out in the dorm dorms and stuff, and just like added things that like aren't actually good, but I think that they just thought was needed to it. Yeah, it's very. But con- then it it's takes very, away it's from very the contemporary. Stuff. Yes. In the worst ways of contemporary film. Yes. It's e- it's yeah. very easy to watch. Um but it is it lacks so much of what the the Asquith version has. It, yes. in terms of it's like very honed in and the performances are like kind of a little, they're not as loose. The actors aren't just like I'm Matthew Modine. I'm here to fuck <laughs> your wife. I mean I, I think oh, that's a line course, in this movie. He, he's an American as well. Yeah, yeah, cool. because of course, there's cause a, you, you gotta, sex you gotta, in Because Americans are, are erotic and uh, they want to have sex with anything. Yep. So you bring him in. He's like, oh, he's upsetting the the, the social order. Yep. Oh, the, oh no! And then Julian oh, Sands. Julian Sands. Yeah, I think uh, other than like those things, I think the thing that annoyed me most was they kept a lot of the actual dialogue. Where it's just like the line where it's like, if you care about me at all, or if you respect me, don't blow yourself up. But then they cut all the stuff before. So there's no actual, like, the lines don't pay off as well. Where it's just like, you took out all the stuff that made the line good, the, like the build up to it. And you're, you're like, nah, it's just the just the zinger at the end. That's the important part. So this, this remake, to me, it just felt like... Uh, like people, it's like you know how people used to quote Anchorman back to each other all the time. Mm-hmm. Just like that, or it's just like what's what's I, like the bottom line thing, man. I like Lamp. I like I love Lamp. Yeah. I love Lamp. Yeah, it's just shit like that. But yeah, it's not it's not outright bad. But if you watch them back to back, you you get a very deep appreciation for uh, the the Browning version, the original one. It's very good. I like it. But yeah, I was totally surprised, Jared. I uh, I dug this movie quite a bit. The 1994 version, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. No. Uh, I want to hear some. Okay. 
I don't know if you want to hear from people who hated the 1951 or the people who loved the 1994 version. I I would uh, I'd, I'd kind of like to hear both because it's like I I'd be really okay. hard pressed to think of people who love yeah. that movie not because it, it's bad but all it's just all, like, all all day long I'd recommend people watch the 51 version. Yes. yes yeah. I and I but yeah it's a, that's a that's a slam dunk. I'm like oh yeah that's a good movie. You should yep. definitely watch it. Maybe you don't care about like school stuff and maybe this won't work for you whatsoever but yeah. i don't know this is this checked my sad bastard box and i thought it was yes, uh, it just did. it's just really well made yep. so who hates 1951's the browning version i don't know uh mid ask mid as rollo midas 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 rollo does he have the midas yeah. rollo touch he turns everything into rollo chocolates fuck that would be cool i'd be all over that maybe. Fat as a house. <laughs> Good. Uh, Midas Rolo, two stars. The lowest rating is two stars. So that tells mm-hmm. you something. Is anything really happening? I mean, yes. There's quite a bit happening all the time. But Midas Rolo, I mean, it's hard to keep up to their standards of their favorite films like First Reformed, Funny Games, the American remake of that one. Uh, Flowers of St. Francis, five stars as well, which is strange to me. Strange, Jared. But they gave It's a Mad, 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 Mad World one star. Okay. Which I've never seen, but I've heard is a good show. So Hmm. what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Smidvin, two and a half stars. Mrs. Crocker Harris is such a bitch. I I, I mean, she's not a pleasant lady, but I don't know if that's a reason to dislike the film itself. Yeah. Okay, let's see what it, favorite films include four movie posters with no titles. And I have no idea what they are. Let's see what these are. We have liquid crystals from 1978 from Jean Payne leave. We have new masculine from 1944 from Francois Rochenbach. Mm-hmm. We have Pond and Waterfall from 1982 from Barbara Hammer. And we have Mermaid Legend from uh, Toshihari Ikata. Those are four of my favorite movies. Uh, who doesn't love those things? They're just, they're so entertaining. It's like not a, not, not a wasted minute. You know what I mean? Just great. Great taste in movies, Smidvin. You did it, bud. You did it. <clears throat> One more. Two and a half stars from Halden Hansen. Homoerotic undertones? No. I disagree So with that. I think the reason this comes up is because I guess the playwright was gay, was a big fan of T.E. Lawrence. And yeah. there's like, when you watch Lawrence of Arabia, there's those undertones there too. But yeah, I, I read that and I went like, uh, nah. I, I think that's an easy like thing to just say and then sure like is. people won't challenge it uh i don't i don't agree with that no. like at all what this the, person what about the homoerotic undertones of our podcast it's an again it's an easy thing to say is it true i don't know one of this this person one of their favorite movies is in bruges so what, how do you feel about that jared <laughs> uh homoerotic undertones potentially yeah more, more so than Browning version. Yeah. You want to hear some five star reviews? I guess, like uh, for nineteen ninety four. Yeah, it's it's surprising because it's like who could love this thing? Not that it's bad or anything. It's just like well, who who cares there's about there's this? There's not movie? that many, but yeah. see, some big fig heads. I think here, big Mike, Mike Figus heads. Five stars from Patty Hannon. When you see such a subtly rich complex harrowing and multi-layered performances albert finney gives here it just reaffirms once again how meaningless and fatuous are the academy awards and the such like this person's uh avatar is one woodrow allen (laughs) yeah and uh one of their favorite movies is hannah and her sisters which is a good show it is a good movie and less than christ is a good movie as is vertigo Yep. I, don't, I don't know Faithless. Did you check out the bio here? Nope. Jared? I'm looking at it right now. A highlight with five stars, anything I see that I particularly love. It's not a score or a movie rating. 
as a rule, I don't rate films because I think it's reductive and a bit childish to give a fully realized living, breathing work of art a mark out of 10. Sometimes I write something, though. Tend not to. <laughs> so uh, I, um, I like that they're like, I don't like star ratings, but then they do it others. I don't do it just because I'm, I, I don't want people to yell at me for misrating their own movies, and I don't care anymore. But uh, not because I think it's not artful, man. I just uh, don't care. Boy, this person wrote a lot. They, they seem to yeah. think Albert Finney proves what a marvelous actor he was. I, I don't know. I don't like his interpretation of the character, but it's because I also l- watched it back to back with... I think one of that I immediately like thought, yeah, this is really good. And then you watch him and you're like, oh, he's just like a guy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, MK, MQ Blank's favorite films, Last Samurai with Tom Cruise, Empire Strikes Back, Dead Again, 91, and then Saving Private Ryan. So hmm. they should come onto our podcast. They'd probably fit in really well. Really well. Really well. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. So or, or what you're saying, RJ, is the croc rocks? I think so. I like the croc. I would even buy a pair of crocs mm-hmm. for that matter. Is he, is he the people's champion? It's hard to say. I want to say yes, but I, I can't say that with any certainty. Crocky Maivia? Potentially, yes. No. Potentially. Okay. Yeah. Well, any final words? on the Browning version before we shut the book of translations on this movie before we turn off the tap on the Brown, uh, totally surprised. Very good. It's a good show. Good. After the break, we're just going to live here in the podcast just for the Mm -hmm. rest of the summer. See what happens. You know, I just, you you go you guys listening go do your own thing we'll just stay here we'll get a cot don't yeah. worry about us get a couple cots and sleep bunker in real nice oh boy erotic undertones. <laughs> 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 